Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be working on our ray gun. We're working on the zappy bits that come out the front. So we'll be working with curves and we'll be doing a bit of animation. So this is my finished ray gun and I think we've done the body now and we're just working on these bits at the front. So I'll grab mine at the front here and press M to move to a new collection and call these Zaps Original. And I come across the top here and hide those. Now what I used for this was curves. So if you have your cursor somewhere around there at the front, Shift A to add, curve, and then a Bezier curve. Now that looks like this. And we can change that around with the tab option, much like going into any mesh with edit mode, although these are not meshes. Let's go to top view first and then sort of move these handles around. So you can select one in the middle and G to grab. You can also rotate normally with R. You can even scale them up so the handles extend and the handles are important for how far this sort of stretches along. You get used to curves after a while, but they can be a little bit tricky to start with. If you want another point, you press E to extrude. So I can pull this point out. I'm going to scale these back just a touch so the handles aren't so extreme. So I've got this sort of curve coming out like this. I might make it a bit further, in fact. Grab in the x-axis and a bit further. And this one too. And that looks nice. And this point I do want to be right in the center there. So I could snap to objects, but I'm just going to grab in the x-axis and move it in. Now at the moment, this curve won't render. So if I go to rendered mode, we can't actually see it, especially when I turn my overlays off. Nothing's there. We need to give it some sort of substance so it renders. So back into solid mode, and across at the side here, you have a curve object data tab. And then further down, we have a geometry setting. Now if you want this to be a complete rounded curve, you can use the depth of the bevel here. But we can also use the extrude and make it a flat line. So you can see that's nice and flat. And you have a resolution as well. If I turn this down, you'll see what that does. Can you see how it goes really sharp now? Because it's on one. So have a think how detailed you want your curves to be. The default is fine and it will render fairly quickly. But if your computer's a bit slower, then you might want to turn that down. I'll turn it on eight just for the sake of experiment. I used the default before, which was 12, but then you'll be able to see the difference. So let's go back to our extrude. I'll just make it a tiny bit thinner. So somewhere around 0.17 meters. It always depends on how big you've made your object though. So just look at mine and roughly find the same size. Now I think I actually wanted to go out further so I can just grab these points. I'm still in edit mode. So I can grab those in the X axis and pull them out a bit further. There we go, a nice long zap. Might pull this one out as well. G then Y. So I've got my curve, I can go back into object mode now. Now you can see this has got a bit of a kink here. So back into edit mode, if I take this middle one, I can scale it up. And now back into object mode, and you can see it's got much more of a curve. So that's what the handles are doing. The length of the handle is the sort of the width of that curve. These are like tangent lines. Okay, so I'm happy with that. What I need to do now is reproduce this in sort of circles around here. So what I'm going to do, into edit mode, I'm going to select this point at the end there. I'll just go into side view with control three so I can see where the middle of my gun is. And I'll just reposition it really slightly. So it's roughly in the middle. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. And if I press shift S now, I can move my cursor. And I want my cursor to go to what I've selected, which is that point. So cursor to selected at the bottom here. Another useful one is cursor to world origin. But for now, cursor to selected and the cursor will stay there. Now when I go to object mode and I change my setting for my pivot point, which is by default medium point, if I change it to 3D cursor now, go back to side view, and I'm using control three on my numpad because three will give me the other side. So control three is the reverse. I think you can press nine as well to get the opposite side, nine on your numpad this is. Now if I duplicate this with shift D or alt D, so shift D for now, and I'll show you what that does, and then rotate, I can create a new zap somewhere around there, and shift D again, and rotate. Now because I did shift D, we got these zaps, and they're just copies, so if I edit one, and go into edit mode, then it's just a copy, and it won't edit the others. But what I'm going to do, is I'm going to duplicate one of these, shift D, and leave it where it is, so just left click, then into edit mode and grab one of these points and just edit my shape really slightly. So it's a different sort of zap. So 
G to grab and move it around. And I might make the whole thing a bit shorter. So if I go into object mode and scale, it scales by that 3D cursor, which is just here. And I can change this at any point back to the medium point, but it's quite useful on the 3D cursor at the moment. So I've scaled it down, but this one, I'm going to press Alt D and then rotate around the X axis. I'll grab both of them, Alt D, R, then X. Now, because I pressed Alt D, it creates an instance. So if I click on one of them and go into edit mode, can you see how it highlights all of them? And I'll click one point at the end and grab that. And you can see it's moving all of them at the same time. So that's quite fun. I think that zap looks quite cool. So they all share the same properties. And if I change one, it will change all of them. You might want to do that. You might want to have a bit of variations. So let's say if I go to one of my other ones that's only duplicated, I can then add a bit of variation without affecting the others. And I want to do that a bit with these because then it adds a bit of randomness to it. And there we've got some squid-like swirly zaps. I think this one's possibly a touch high, so I'll just bring that down because I want a circle to go around the outside as well. Okay, so we've got some basic zaps. I also had a couple of circles that zapped up and down. So where the 3D cursor is is fine, and I'll press Shift A to add, curve, circle. So it's a curve circle I'm using. I'm going to rotate that in the Y axis 90 degrees and scale it up so we can see our circle surrounding our gun. For now, I will move it in the X axis to around here, and I'll do the same thing with the curve. So into the curve object data tab and turn the extrude up just a touch. And that looks fine. I'll duplicate it this time with Shift D, grab in the X axis and scale it down. Of course, I've still got my 3D cursor on, so it's going around my 3D cursor. Let's change that now. So back up to here and medium point. Scale it down and Shift D to duplicate, drag it in the X axis and maybe we'll scale it down a touch there as well. So now I've got my zap set up. Let's go to shading. So in my shading tab at the moment, I need to go to rendered mode just up the top here and let's give these a new material. Now this is nice and simple. Click on new and we can either change the emission down here, but I prefer to give it a natural emission shader because this can only go up to a maximum of one. So we'll delete the principal PSDF. Make sure you haven't got the material output selected as well. Shift A to add shader emission. Plug that into the surface output and we'll give it a nice sort of bluey sci-fi look. And we've just got it on this object at the moment. Let's turn that up and you can see when I turn it up, it's starting to be affected by the bloom. So let's select all the others and then select this one last. So it's got a yellow outline around it and then press control L to link the materials. And there we go. We've got our beautiful zaps. If I turn the overlays off, we'll see exactly what they look like. And then we can start fiddling with the strength. I want them nice and bright. Oh yes. Now at this point you can change the size of your curves. And if you've got instance on, then they'll all change. But if you just duplicate them, then you'll need to change them one by one. Okay, so the last bit is the animation. So let's go to the animation tab here and we get a preview of our camera here. I've got a camera in my scene and then we've got our main scene here and the timeline down the bottom. In fact, we've got the dope sheet down the bottom. Timeline or dope sheet shouldn't make too much difference. What I'm going to do is change this one to the shader editor. And there's a reason for that. So up to the top here, across to the shader editor, just there, and press N to get rid of the menu. And let's come into here. Now, in order to animate the brightness of this, so it appears and reappears, we're going to have to have a mix shader. Because we could turn this all the way down to zero, but we still will have some black outlines here, and we need to make them completely transparent. If we turn the overlays off, you can still see these black lines. So I'll put that up to about 15 again. So we have to have some sort of transparency in here as well that we animate. So I'll show you the node setup. Shift A to add, shader, transparent. We want to mix these two together with a mix node. With Node Wrangler installed, you can press Shift, Control, and right click and drag, and it creates a mix shader. Otherwise, you'll have to go in and Shift A, add shader, mix shader, and hook both your things up to the shader tab there. And you can see at 100%, it makes it completely transparent. And with the factor at zero, it goes back to the emission. So we can animate the factor. So let's do that first, and then we'll concentrate on any movement later. Now, if you've never done any animation before, I'll try and keep this as simple as possible, but you may want to look at my introduction to animation to understand things like keyframes. So let's keep our animation at 250 frames as the end point. 
We'll bring our timeline playhead to the beginning and I'll move the timeline up so we can see it a bit easier. Now I like to set my animation output to 25 frames, so that's this tab here, to 25 frames per second. The default is 24 because that's film, but 25 is much easier for figuring things out. So we'll have it zapping every 25 seconds. So if I bring my playhead to 25, the other thing I have changed is I've changed from the dope sheet to the timeline. So I think by default it's on the dope sheet, but change it across the timeline, it's a tiny bit easier to understand. In order to see the keyframes, we actually need to select on our node. So make sure the mix shader that we're keyframing is selected. And then right click where it says factor, because that's the thing we're animating. Right click, insert keyframe. And you can see a little keyframe appears there. And if I bring down my disclosure arrow, you can see all my Bezier curves and materials. If I open them all up, all have a keyframe on them. So there's the materials there under each Bezier curve that's up here. So at 25 seconds, it's going to flash blue. So I want to come back a couple of frames. So if I use my arrow keys and use the left arrow key twice, I can then bring this up to one so it's all transparent and right click, insert keyframe. So we've got a keyframe going from one, which is fully transparent to zero in a couple of frames, which you can see there and it will create a flash. Now all I want to do is copy this keyframe over to here so it goes back to one. So I can click on this keyframe at the top, which will select all the ones underneath because it's the summary keyframe. Control C, move my playhead to the point I want to paste it to, and Control V. So it's pasted. So there's the beginning ones here are the same as the end ones here. Now when I scrub through, you get a quick flash. And if I play it at normal speed, there's a nice flash. So I want to copy all these keyframes and paste them in every second. So I can select the top three again, and I can actually do a box select like this. Select those summary top ones and they'll select the ones beneath. Control C, move along to 48, and Control V, and then the flash will end up on the 50. So just a couple of frames before each second. And that's great, I'm not too worried about the end in the beginning. Now I want to animate the movement of these three objects here. So that's curve five, six, and seven in my case. So select all of them like I have there. Click on frame 27, which is the end of our flash. And that's the position we want them in at the end of the flash. So they'll start here and zoom across here in these four frames. So we can insert a keyframe for this movement. The shortcut key when you've got your mouse in this window is I for insert keyframe. And we want to keyframe the location. So we've set a keyframe there, and you can see the object transforms appear. I'll open up this one as well so we can see all three of them, and some new keyframes appear. These ones are for our materials. So if I bring it back to the beginning, just there, and press G to grab in the x-axis and bring them to the front, then press I, location, to insert a location keyframe, they will start off at the front there, and then zap their way to the front. Now at the moment they're still at the front, so we need to copy these keyframes across to each of these. So I'll do it a slightly different way this time, with those keyframes selected, so I can just press the summary again. But remember I am copying the materials in this case as well, but that doesn't matter because they're all the same across. Because if I click the summary, then I'll get the material node as well. Just be aware of that. But in our case it's absolutely fine to click the summary for both of these, Shift D this time to duplicate, and then drag it across and over the top of the next set, and it will duplicate these ones from here to here. So Shift D to duplicate, move it across. So you can use Shift D to duplicate and you can use Control C and Control V to paste. Okay, let's play that through. Now it looks slightly strange because it's traveling back like this when they're selected, but if I turn the overlays off, you'll see it just flashing through and you won't see that return, of course. Now there is one thing I've forgotten to set up. As you can see, the transparency isn't showing through and I do need to go back to the shader editor quickly and make sure that blend mode is actually on. Something like alpha clipped is the cheapest. Now the flashes will be properly transparent like this. Okay, so I hope that sums everything up. It can be fairly complicated animation. Make sure you look at my beginner course for that if you're getting stuck at all. So I hope that was helpful to you and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.